Hey Gadget Groupies! So we've got an exciting video today because we're going to be talking about ocean conservation and some of the net new tech tools, it's not, it's not very easy to say, no, new, tech new tech tools, tools that the Santa Monica Aquarium, that the... Santa it, Monica Pier Aquarium and Heal the Bay. Heal the Bay. Now so that actually did sort of take me by surprise because it's not often that you find an aquarium that has a command as the name of the aquarium because it's like, that's like an action verb. You're right. gonna heal the bay. You're gonna do this. Which is the whole mission of Heal the Bay, the nonprofit that runs the San Juan Aquarium. And I'm being joined by the lovely Jacqueline Freelander. Now you wrote a book about ocean critters. I did. I wrote two books under the Friends with Fins. Uh, I wrote Friends with Fins, the talent show, and Friends with Fins, the fish capturing pirate, to teach kids about ocean conservation. And now I do a weekly Friends with Fins Friday video. Fantastic. And so you actually spent some time as a volunteer here at this aquarium. I did. I spent a lot of time here. I love it here. It's such a good aquarium because it's small and it's very hands on, and you can just sort of Everyone can learn about stuff and you actually get to talk with people one-on-one right. -on -one as opposed to going to a huge aquarium. And well, and, and I, I'm absolutely guilty. I'm sure you've probably heard other people tell you this story. I'm absolutely guilty of not having known that this place even existed. Sort that of just hidden under, under, the, under the, pier. the pier. Under is an amazing aquarium that's full of educational opportunities and discussion. And the mission statement being that we've got to protect California water systems. Exactly. So all of the fish you'll find in here are all sort of from the Bay Area for the most part. And and this whole display is fairly new and it's all about the California watershed system. So how if you flick a cigarette butt out your window, <laughs> that right. cigarette butt is going to end up on the beach. Your cigarette butt flicking has two potential catastrophic events that you can either start a wildfire or you can be polluting our water system. So you can have toxic water or toxic air all because of you being selfish and not putting out your cigarette properly. Exactly. And it's not just cigarettes, it's anything. It's soda cans, uh, plastic straws or the worst, mylar balloons, anything that is a pollutant. So, you know, at the end of your birthday party, I remember, uh, you know, as a kid, I was even guilty of this. Your mom's like, okay, just let them go. Right. And then you let all the balloons go. Where, where do those balloons up. go? Well, and I was, I was working a party at, um, uh, Magic Mountain, mm -hmm. and at the end, they were cutting and letting them go, and I said to the lady, I was like, what are you doing? And she was like, oh, I'm just getting rid of them, and I was like, give them all to me, and so I have like these millions of balloons, and I'm standing there like right. trying to pop them all to put them in the garbage. As so kids around you are sobbing, why is the lady popping like, them? You can't have them, they have to go in the trash. <laughs> But it was really for a good cause. Exactly, so, so that they don't end meaningful. up in some poor animal's stomach. But I'm glad you brought up plastic because this was the aquarium. I, I, I didn't even realize this was the aquarium that was really at the forefront of bringing up the discussion on, on uh, banning plastic grocery bags. Yeah, Heal the Bay did a ton of work and we had volunteers going to every public forum and city council meeting and writing and petitioning to get the ban enacted because it's super important and something so easy to do to just bring your own grocery bags. Right. It was a, several years in the making, but Oh, it I believe it. And, and especially once we started it. hearing those stories, it was shocking to me how much resistance there was to the idea just because. Right. This is the way that I go grocery shopping, so I don't want anyone to change that. And you were telling me this off camera that there's still pushback to the idea of banning plastic grocery right. bags. Right, especially here, which is absurd to me because I feel like it's a thing that it's, uh, if you bring your bag, you don't have to pay. Right. But I was outside of a grocery store and there's always those people that are like, oh, here, sign this petition. And I always am like, oh, what am I signing before I sign? And thank goodness I did because she was like, oh, to get the ba to ban repeal. bag repealed. <laughs> and I was like, wait a second. I have something to tell you about this situation. She was like, but you have to pay money for grocery bags. And I said, or you could just participate right. and you re use reusable bags because then it's good for the environment, it's less waste. And living in a coastal city, I feel like it's even that much more important than people that don't necessarily see, you know, try and convince somebody in Ohio that it's important, not as easy of a sell because Absolutely. Well, and they're not they don't immediately affected. And, exactly. And, and I think that's also one of the reasons why I think it's so crucial to start getting people's eyes under the water. Right. Here in, uh, in Southern California. And for that, you've actually lined us up an amazing uh, opportunity to talk about something new here with uh, a volunteer by the name of Jose, who's going to uh, show us. He's actually the Aquarius. Oh, he's, he's the, the Aquarius. Of, I'm so he's, sorry. Yeah, he's not, he's not he's a volunteer. Like the head he's like the head Aquarius. He's a big deal guy, <laughs> yeah. and I apologize. But he's going to be showing us some new technology that you guys yes. are going to be employing here at this aquarium to start educating children, but then also so that we can start looking under the water here. Yeah, and for adults. So, yeah, kids and adults. 
adults. Well, we got to play with some robots, guys. Yay! All right, so we're here with Jose, and we're playing with some robots. We are. So this is Video Ray. This is a Scout drone. Is this what you it's, guys are deploying now? It's an ROV. It's a remotely okay. operated vehicle. Submarine, of course. It's underwater. Submergible. <laughs> so, totally submersible. And um, we are using it for oh, cool. educational purposes. What we want kids to do is to, of course, learn about the engineering, the technology behind mm -hmm. Uh, these these bots and these types of, of technologies, um, but we also want them to troubleshoot and use their brain to solve puzzles. So we have all kinds of activities that we've been we've been developing that uh, have questions. They're very thought provoking questions, either about wildlife or the environment or a, an issue here in our local uh, waters. Um, and then using the ROV and the question in their body and brain, they've got to find the solution. Okay. There. So it's fun. You get to play with this R with this with this uh, submersible ROV, and you get to think and use your brain. And, and so is this is this is the very first one that you guys are utilizing for this type of education resource. Yeah, we've we've toyed uh, with uh, different versions that we've made mm -hmm. um, with students and with our volunteers for years. And but this is the first time we actually went out and purchased. Uh, we did some fundraising. and We purchased a professional ROV. Um, to, for, for this purpose. And we also want to use it to launch off the pier and observe uh, the wildlife around the pier. Animals living on the, on the sandy cool. bottom, animals living on the pier pilings, and all the fish in so, the So, I mean, like prior to using something like that, someone, something someone would have to get in a wetsuit, sort of take a, a mini dive yeah. by all those fisherman hooks. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's <laughs> a scary place to dive. How deep does this guy go? Um, this guy, I believe it's 175 feet. Oh, wow. Yeah, is the rating on this one. So, so can I give him a shot? Can yeah, I, can I get in, in here. Like, this you're up and down, and here's yeah, your cool. moving so, around. In other words, it's just like it's just like an Xbox, then, right? It is pretty <laughs> much, yeah. Oh, uh, and he's pretty quick too. Yeah, it's got good, good, good control. And so, what happens? I read him a clue, and then he has to find the the, the right. Thing. You want to read a clue? Sure, I'll read a clue. I have ten right, legs yeah. and armored okay. skin. I eat urchins with my mandibles. I am happiest in an MPA or marine protected area. Well, I found an urchin, so it's not in here. Uh, okay, let's try another one. So if it eats urchins, it's not the urchins. <laughs> it's not so the urchin if it for? eats urchins. <laughs> and the... That's a flatfish. That's a flatfish. You can, you can tell it's a flatfish because it's flat. Yep. That's, that's how you know. That's you using your brain. Me, me using my science there. Science is easy, guys. <laughs> the brain part of it. I can, I can science with the best of them. <laughs> This thing controls really well. It's pretty amazing. Oh, there's an oh, octopus. There's an octopus. But that's that's eight legs. Yep. I just heard that the correct plural for octopus is not octopi. It's octopuses. Pluses. Octopuses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Algae. I, I, Algae. I apparently went the long way around you to did. find. Oh wait, no. I think I'm back at the urchin. Yeah, but take a closer look. Take a closer look. Cause that's what science is about. It's taking. Oh, oh behind the lobster. I went to the first one. <laughs> I only it. saw the urchin. But you it's good because it. we got to see everything. We got, to see the, whole we got thing. the whole tour. And so, so this is going to be something that kids have access to through through different programming. So depending on a, a program they sign up for, or some of our various camps that we offer throughout the year, especially our big summer camps, uh, we'll be able to use. Uh, current and ongoing as, as the programming evolves and the curriculum evolves, we will be adding more fun and adventure. Because we know have, we'll have some that are suitable for middle school, sixth grade, mm -hmm. seventh grade, but then we may have a 12th grader or a 10th grader or an adult uh -huh. like us who like to geek out, right? And <laughs> we want tough questions. <laughs> right. And, so, uh, and we want to be challenged, mentally simulated. So we'll have varying types of curricula. This can record content? Actually, it, this camera is, is a view only. But okay. we did add a mount to the um, oh, video to, like, array hook up another little to GoPro put a GoPro or, or some okay, type nice. device. Yeah, and then we just when we add that camera, we can record and we just shift the ballast. So then we just have to read ballast is another part part of the issue here. So when we're in the water, something that students will learn about is how to balance this device, this uh -huh. ROV, properly depending on the water temperature, depending on the density of, of or the mass of the unit. And so if you were to go on a dive and say you were diving at 60, 70, 80 feet, could you send this down to sort of explore below and then yeah. bring it up with you, sort of like do a tandem? Mm -hmm. or you can have someone on a boat, oh. um, you know, following the divers. It's a small unit, so if there's a lot of current, it's a, can't, it can't really push through fire. It doesn't have the horsepower. Yeah, it doesn't have that. So, uh, but if, if it's a calm day and, the, and it's a light, light current or no current at all, 
super great. Especially for what you were saying and being able to actually capture sort of the natural California habitat. Because I think a lot of people are able to sort of gloss over some of the ideas of what's actually happening in our oceans, right. especially right off the shore. Like oh, it yeah. looks pretty and it looks great in a postcard. And I don't think people really understand or appreciate what's happening like yeah. yards. Yeah, you, Conservation yards away you, from. You, yeah. na you nailed it totally. And that's what I'm excited about using this device on the pier because not everybody can visit the aquarium because they're, you know, they just don't see it or they're doing other things. But if we're out there at a station and a family from China walks by, right. you know, and they're like, hey, what are you doing? We're like, look, check out what lives here. And they're like, holy, this is so cool. You know, right. and, they, and yeah. they're here visiting from a different country. Or it could be a local family that's in from, you know, L.A. somewhere. And they get to see what's out here because most people come to the beach, sit on the sand, don't know yeah. what's happening. Exactly. Right. No idea. Just like I, you said. Yeah. I was maybe guilty of that until today. <laughs> So. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. That's why we brought you yeah. here. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to show hey, this. Hey, you're welcome. My this pleasure. This is phenomenal. My this pleasure. Is so hey, exciting. thank you so much. My pleasure. Anytime. Come and visit the Santa Monica Pier Aquarium. We always have some fun things going on here. So that, that's amazing. I'm a huge fan of drones and quadcopters. I've been playing with that robots. That thing is so cool. Well, and just amazing how well that thing actually handles. Because like, I'm a terrible pilot. But that thing, like you very quickly were getting in and, and like navigating is just right. amazing stuff. So that's obviously a high tech solution that we're starting to play with now. It's becoming more accessible for even smaller organizations to start getting their hands on. What are some of the low tech protections in place that organizations in like this aquarium might be employing to try and one, help spread the word. Education's obviously a big deal. Right. We gotta reach the kids, because I think a lot of grown-ups are a lost cause. <laughs> uh, it's just, you Children know, are our future, as cliche as that I'm sounds. I'm set in my ways, because I'm old, <laughs> brrr. <laughs> right, but if we can teach them young to, like easy things that you can do at home are cut up six pack rings. So when you get a thing of soda, cut up the plastic so that nothing gets entangled I in really it. thought those would just go away. You know, yeah. you've got your cardboard case right? of like 12 and you're like, oh, well, we'll have some other container. We don't have to keep using the plastic rings thing. I remember even like there was like a G.I. Joe ending. There was like <laughs> cutting up plastic rings. It was like that was in the 80s. And we're still right. like having to teach kids like, oh, by the way, this Cut kills fish. Exactly. So. And birds and penguins and everything. everything. Yeah. yeah. So that's something easy. Just don't waste water. I mean, when you're brushing your teeth, shut off the water. I can't tell you how many times. You know, I say that to people and they're like, oh, that's Whoa. a really good idea. It's like it's something so easy. So little things like that that you can do at home. And then marine protected area laws, it's sort of like a medium scale. Right. You know, it takes a lot of sort of policy and things like that to get enacted. But then once those areas are protected, the fish and marine life in that area can sort of repopulate and then right. get to a point where then we can start fishing again as necessary and do whatever we need to do in those areas. Gotcha. And people can find more information on the work that you're doing with Friends with Fins at? Uh, YouTube slash Jacqueline Friedlander. So just check out my channel and there's a Friends with Fins Friday video every week. Well, thank you so much for uh, the opportunity to come yeah, and talk about this stuff. Absolutely. I, the, you got me with the robot. Super so fun, I had, right? I had, to, I had to come. She said, I've got, got, I've got an underwater drone and I was like, I'm there yesterday. So that was super exciting. Thank you so much for joining You're us. You're welcome. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and educational opportunities like these. And I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there supporting it by hitting the fan funding, shopping via those Amazon affiliate links, and sharing my videos on your favorite social sites like Twitter and Reddit and Facebook and the Googles Plus. So please keep bringing more <laughs> cool people to the party. Definitely check out Jacqueline's, uh, Jacqueline's YouTube channel. I'll leave a link down below this video. Hit that thumbs up button and I will catch you all on the next video.